Hello, good afternoon, class. Welcome to our next lecture of NDT. Uh, it's this topic is about magnetic particle inspection, which we have previously discussed. That the when when we are going to test for <coughs> any of the flaws on a material by using magnetic inspection technique, we generally use a magnetic philosophy that is magnetic flux, current flow, uh, how the particles are being distributed. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss how it is going to behave how it is going to behave what is the steps sequence of steps that has to be followed while we are going to use magnetic inspection technique so we have already discussed all these things magnetic induction how it can be done so in, in magnetic particle inspection process first we have to clean the surface second step is for demagnetization third is magnetization next we have to go for addition of magnetic particles next illumination interpretation and documentation and reporting the very first thing is cleaning our surface pre preparation generally in liquid penetration technique also we have seen that the, ma the materials to should be prepared before we go for uh, liquid penetration technique the before we apply some penetrant the uh, the reason behind that is uh, all the verticals which are generally used or which are in which are in use or which are kept held for some per, some time that may get rusted or that may be having some other uh, surface other particles on it so when you go for testing because of the presence of uh, foreign material on it it will not give you the accurate readings or accurate uh, solution which you are uh, searching for which you are looking for so to avoid that uh, what we say uh, uh, false indications so then generally we go for cleaning purpose so in this generally the uh, in order to identify the defects surface should be free from rust and greases so which is generally cleaned by using uh, emery paper or by using some kind of uh, to remove the grease we use some kind of detergents okay if surface is not clean thoroughly it must be allowed it, it will not allow the magnetic particles to move freely obviously if you are using dry, uh, dry magnetic particles it will not prove freely next mechanical cleaning is carried out by using wire brush or sand uh, sand blasting technique or degreasing techniques generally uh, we, if you see some wire brushes which are generally used to rub the surfaces to remove the small small pores on the surface of the material next is demagnetization when because uh, if, if the mat if the particle before going for any magnetic inspection part and uh, technique if it is having some magnetization inside it will give it will have some you know, magnetic field around it because of it the sus suspectability of the magnetic particles will be uh, not proper as per the inspection so if not de demagnetized the residual magnetic magnetism in the particle may mislead the examination result this is the main reason so if, if there is some uh, already some magnetization is present if we are not demagnetizing because of the previous magnetic field what happens the, the the poles will be there north pole and south pole will be already existing because of it when you are going for testing because of that north pole and south pole the, the particles will may behave in a different way the magnetic particle when you are testing they may behave in a different way after completely demagnetization again we go for a magnetization purpose what is difference between this demagnetization and again why we go for magnetization is in demagnetization generally uh, we, we, we don't know the magnetization is uniform or not okay if it is not uniform what will happen the test will be not accurate to overcome that what we generally do is we generally remove whole magnetism then we apply for uh, a new magnetization in which we, we use a proper selection of current so with the proper selection of current what happens the the there will be certain rules where the north pole and south pole will be present because of that we can able to inspect the surfaces generally if you see th uh, the local electrode magnetization we use is 4 ampere per se centimeter electrode generally we use in most of the magnetization purpose next is addition of magnetic particle after the magnetization is completed we apply the magnetic particles on it so that we can see the behavior of the magnetic particles so uh, generally this this process is generally used on for the surface level uh, inspection and we can go for to little bit uh, uh, below the surface level especially if, li if it is a liquid penetrant we can only go for only the extreme surfaces but whereas in this to subsurfaces to little more subsurfaces we can be able to go so generally we use two type of magnetic particles that is dry dry part dry powder and wet powder that is nothing but dry magnetic particles and wet magnetic particles so what are those things we will discuss in the next slides next is illumination what is this illumination is once you are applying the magnetic particles basing on the behavior of the magnetic particle how they have arranged if there is a crack 
So I have discussed in this uh, previous slides like this. If there is a uh, existing of crack, again there will be a generation of uh, north and south pole. Because of that, the particles may be uh, the particle behavior will be different here. So we, which we cannot be able to observe with your naked eye. Generally, what we do is we try to eliminate it by using some kind of sufficient light. Either we can use ordinary light. When if it is a fluorescent type of powder, when uh, fluorescent powders are nothing but the powders which are mixed with some kind of dyes. so which are generally illuminated which are generally uh, uh, what do we say give different color on, uh, in the presence of uv lights okay next is interpretation after seeing this uh, behavior how they have been arranged uh, after magnetization and spreading of the power then we will able to interpret how the crack is present how the crack is present and to what extent the crack is open okay so basing on that we will able to study the crack which is open to the surface is easy to detect but the questionable situation is light polishing and magnification is required again this when the cracks are open again we need to see uh, how how uh, because of the light polishing means we go to we go for secondary operation and magnifications means we go for uh, some kind of glasses by using which we can able to see the uh, crack properly next is after completing all this thing we we try to record them using photograph and uh, tab uh, impression so this is a set of operations cleaning surface preparation demagnetization magnetization then we go for addition of particles next illumination interpretation documentation and reporting most of the time we go for photographs so that we can have a record of them very useful uh, whenever you are going to have uh, go through those things you can able to easily study them by using the photographs already have discussed on uh, dry and wet particle inspection in dry particle inspection in this uh, the the magnetic powders will be in a dry form which will not be mixed with any kind of liquid they will be purely dry particles just like a powder so uh, they will be those will be applied applied on the surface uh, as the uh, after the material is being magnetized so the dry the dry particle inspection is generally used for rough surfaces whereas in wet particle and and another important thing in dry particle inspection is the extra extra powder which has been spread on the material can be easily blown off if you are using some kind of blowers we can by using the blowers we can able to remove the extra particles okay but whereas in wet wet particle inspection the liquid cannot be removed easily the extra the liquid will be present on the surface in wet particle inspection generally what we do is we mix the uh, uh, particles magnetic particles into some kind of liquid carriers uh, the, those liquid carriers may be uh, kerosene may be water so basing on the application we generally uh, differentiate the liquid okay Uh, this technique is commonly performed using stationary wet horizontal inspection unit in which liquid is present along with that few uh, suspension of filled particles will be used uh, dry particle inspection the dry means sorry the dry means uh, magnetic particles are applied in fine powder form they will be purely fine powder form the term continuous means the magnetic particles are applied while current is flowing on it okay when current is flowing on it we generally apply the magnetic power in this technique the particles are applied when the magnetic forces is on the particle application must cease before the current flow ceases okay the use of dry particle is used is to detect the slightly subsurface discontinuity i have told not exactly in the surface but we can go for some subsurface since the particles have high permeability permeability means they can easily behave with the amount of uh, electric magnetic field compared to that of the particles in the wet wet inspection the only advantage of using dry particle is their mobility which is relatively poor when, when used in dc current okay which is relatively poor when used in dc current their their particle their advantage will be they can be easily removed when they are used on a surface they can be easily removed by using some kind of blowing off see here they are using some kind of uh, dry particles after the extra particle can be removed by using this kind of blowers okay and these are generally some kind of ma magnetic particles so we'll see what are these devices these devices are generally nothing but called as uh magnetizing particle magnetizing devices how the devices are being magnetized those things we will discuss in the next upcoming class next is wet continuous uh, the term wet continuous means the particles are uh, su uh, suspended in liquid carrier the liquid carrier such as kerosene petroleum or distilled water okay in containing specially formulated additives can be used during wet inspection compared to dry inspection the particles suspended are generally low permeable which makes this technique less favorable for the direction of slightly set surfaces this can be used only for surfaces okay the most advantage is the improved mobility of the particle may be makes the technique very suitable mobility means it can be easily moving because the liquid is present the liquid can easily take off 
along with the liquid they can able to move the particles can move but whereas in dry once you are poured they will stagnant on the surface they will not able to uh, move on the move from the surface from one layer to another layer from some surface to other surface but whereas in the liquid what happens with the flow of liquid they can able to move in any, any direction next the suspension with the adherence to the complex shapes better than dry obviously the surface is complex if there is a liquid the liquid can go in any any direction and any space for example if there is a uh, what do we say uh, gas gas surface uh, and there are internal gearings also if you pour the liquid powder on the surface it can able to sit only on the upper surface it cannot able to sit on the edges or it can cannot go in the uh, internal surfaces but whereas if you pour the liquid the liquid will touch the surface as well as the gaps or the cracks which are present inside the uh, the the contours present inside the surface they can easily flow because of the presence of the liquid okay so if you see the advantages and the limitations of different different liquid carriers kerosene and petroleum distillate the advantages is helps to lubricate the parts in this the, the they do not constitute the corrosion sources and their limitations is they are more expensive and produce health problems okay but whereas in water the advantages they are expensive and no health issues will be there whereas the limitation is constitutes the corrosion constitutes the corrosion obviously when you use liquid on a steel surface the steel surface may get corroded next is magnetic field orientation in this magnetic field orientation when you are uh, why you are seeing this magnetic field uh, orientation is nothing but when you are applying the magnetization to a surface the the orientation of the magnetic field will be different one it may be circular or it may be horizontal longitudinal so how the circular and longitudinal will be present that i will show you if for example if, if, if this is your surface take consider this is your cylinder on which you are conducting the inspection okay this is your inspection mm, surface now if you want to make the magnetic field uh, to pass through horizontal surface because you are having any cracks in a linear way if you want to check this what we will do is we will bring a permanent magnet or a magnet near to this generally we, do, we know this lens law so a permanent magnet will be brought near and uh, close to this and what we do what we do is we, we keep on bringing uh, close to the surface and taking off close to the surface bringing it away close to it so because of that if this is a north pole the same pole will be generated here okay north or south pole will be generated because of this if this is south pole this again this will be generated as north pole again this will be generated as north pole because of this what happens to the magnetic field is the magnetic field will be flowing in this direction which is completely a linear one which is completely a linear one okay because of the current flowing in this direction or because of the permanent magnet what happens the, the, there will be generation of poles here because of this poles the magnetic field will be flowing through the surface in a longitudinal direction similarly if circular what we generally do is if this is our cylinder or solenoid what we do is we will consider we will correct a n number of wires like this okay n number of wires like this so if the wires are flowing like this what happens means when current passes through this the magnetic field will be generated around the surface we already know whenever the current is uh, there in a wire around the wire the, the flux will be generated so around this the flux will be generated okay so in this way the longitudinal magnetic field has a uh, forces running parallel to the axis of the port axis of the port whereas in circular magnetic field in which the lines of magnetic field runs circumferentially they will run around the circumference of the surface okay this is the difference between the longitudinal magnetic field and circular magnetic field basing on the orientation the the particles will be distributed around the surface okay next generally what are the various methods which you generally use uh, equipment to generally use magnetic inspection technique is magnetization equipments portable supplies and lightning equipment lightning is nothing but which if you generally use to see the flaws after uh, applying the powder we know that while illuminating what are the different types of illumination which you generally use next is portable power supplies when we are trying to magnetize the surface what kind of power we are going to apply is uh, what type of various portable supplies we have next is magnetization what are the various type of magnetization techniques which you generally use so if you see generally magnetization techniques one is permanent magnets if you have a permanent black magnet which we brought near to the surface uh, and take away from the surface because the flow of uh, two magnetic surface the flux will be generated uh, because of bringing of the magnet the other surface will be magnetized generally we know all these things next is electromagnetic yokes what we generally do is if this is my material if this is my material okay 
uh, if this is a material where I have to conduct the inspection. So what I generally do is I will pass, a, I will have a coil like this, I will have a yoke like this, among which one is flexible coil, another is a fixed coil. I will keep on the surface one end and keep the surface on the other end. I will pass the current through this coil because of the pass of coil. So this, this, this two become will, uh, these two will behave as a because of pass of current. Obviously this will behave as a magnet. So because of this magnet, this surface will be again magnetized and uh, there will be pass of flux through this, magnetic flux through this. So when the flux is passing through this, you can able to find the transfer cracks on the surface. Okay. Similarly in this rods, uh, what we generally do is, these are the electrodes. In the electrode, these are my uh, two electrodes in which uh, the current will be passing, you will be holding these two surfaces by using two holders just like you are uh, welding source, welding uh, things. So you, you have to keep in between the two surfaces where you have to measure and you will pass the uh, uh, magnetic field or electric field uh, between these two, Elect generally we will feel that we will send the electric field here between these two. When the electric field passes between these two electrodes, because of these two electrodes there will be flow of current or because of this electric flow there will be generation of magnetic field. Always remember the magnetic field and the electric field are uh, opposite to one another. Means when electric field is there, obviously the magnetic field will be generated. When magnetic flux is there, obviously there will be generation of current. Okay. So these two are simultaneously uh, presenting with one another. If you take any kind of uh, devices, generally you find those things. Okay. Next is portable coils. In these portable coils, what we do is there will be these are the holes in which the coils will be uh, surrounded. So we'll pass n number of coils through this. Uh, after the passing of the n number of coils, we'll just try to give the uh, power supply to that. Because of the power supply, what happens is there will be generation of uh, current in this. Because of the current, the flux will be generated. Because of the flux, this this will be uh, the flux will be generated on the surface. The flux will be generated on the surface. So if there is a crack on this longitudinal transversal crack, we can able to find this. So see this. These are the magnetic field generated. So because of that, we can able to see. Next, magnetic particles. What are the various types of magnetic particles which we generally use? Is iron carbide particles, pure iron car pure iron powder particles. Next is fluorescent magnetic particles. In iron carbide particles, generally these are very uh, what we say fine powder like structure. Generally, if you see iron carbide itself, this will be around six microns to nine microns. So this is a fine powder which is generally used with. Uh, uh, liquids only they cannot be used because they are very fine they cannot if, if you pour it you cannot able to see them properly so we try to dissolve them in any kind of liquid uh, after that we can able to study for the small discontinuities it, it can be used even for a small small discontinuities it can be is uh, generally used but whereas in pure iron particles iron particles cannot be made to fine powder they will be somewhat larger in diameter compared to that of the iron uh, iron carbide uh, they are comparatively larger because of uh, and these are generally used for finding the large discontinuities. Uh, these are generally used only in dry dry inspection technique. Whereas in fluorescent magnetic powders, these are nothing but the magnetic powders that is nothing but magnetic powders which are added with some kind of dye. Because of the presence of dye, those will be fluorescent. Means they can able to uh, they can able to give the um, what we, different colors when we are applying for ultra uh, ultraviolet ray, uh, rays. So we will see all those images in upcoming slides. Next, how we are going to indicate, how we are going to see the indications in uh, in magnetic field, which are correct uh, relevant indications, which are non-relevant indications, which are false indications. So indications are nothing but the study of the uh, study of the magnetic particles on the surface. If this is a crack or not, if this is a correct study or not. So what is the false indications are nothing but false indications are produced due to improper handling or excessive magnetic magnetizing current if you pass large amount of current the uh, the readings which you are going to get will not be much accurate for particular particle the magnetization should be limited to some on certain extent okay and another thing is inadequate inadequate pre cleaning because if you are not cleaning the surface properly as we, as we have previously discussed that there will be an initial magnetization present in the surface or there will be a grease surface or which avoids the magnetism to flow there may be oil uh, present on the surface which uh, which does not allow the what we say the magnetic particles to sit on the surface so there may be a corrosion which resists the particle to touch from the magnetic um, flux and between them it behaves as a barrier between them uh, and there is a, there will be a surface contamination these all things generally lead to false indication next is non-relevant indications will happen when there is a 
uh, uh, results of flux leakage flux leakage is nothing but if you are not having proper flux as we previously seen this if you are continuously uh, passing this current if this is not touching properly if this is not having proper um, arrangement between these two surfaces because of that the there will be a flux leakage happening between the surfaces take here example if you have two coils above if you are having only one coil because of two and one coil there will be a different flow of current and different uh, what we say the flux will be leaking there will be no proper flux around the surface uh, okay this is due to geometrical changes of the testing object next to thread root the gear teeth etc next is relevant indications relevant indications are produced by flux leakage due to discontinuity in the particle the exact readings will be happening when there is a flux passing even flux passing through the surfaces and because of the even flux if there is a crack what happens there will be a flux leakage like it will be a projection or it will be a small uh, hole or between uh, that you can able to easily observe there will be uh, for example if you are having a complete surface there is a small crack because of that crack what happens this will behave as a north pole and this will behave as a south pole uh, which you have seen in this case just just a second you can see this you can able to uh, see this this is a crack what happens when you pour the magnetic particles the south pole magnet um, the magnetic particles will sit here the magnetic particles will sit here the magnetic particles will sit here magnetic particles but whereas in between these gap the magnetic particles will not be able to sit because here there is no magnetization so north south north south completed this is a vacuum place so because of that the magnetic particles cannot be able to sit but whereas in this surface again it is a same continuous material here it is having some magnetization they will go and sit here okay this gap cannot be filled with any kind of particle because it is a no magnetic flux will be there there is a leakage of magnetic flux when this is happening you can able to see this uh, that when you illuminate or when you try to see through in some kind of uv light or uh, that thing you can able to see those readings and you can able to understand that there is a gap created which is because of the crack present on the surface now let us see what are the advantages generally we have uh, by using magnetic particle inspection is it is very quick and relatively uncomplicated it gives immediate indications or defects indi indications of defects it shows surfaces are near surface defects and there are most uh, serious ones as they are con 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 concentrate stresses this method can be adopted for site or workshop use this is uh, in inexpensive compared to that of the radiography means uh, some latest technologies are which we generally use by using sending some some amount of uh, sounds because of that sounds if there is a crack that will mm, that will create a echo basing on that you can able to study next is large or small objects can be uh, studied easily elaborate pre cleaning is not necessary we need not to go for elaborate a large process of cleaning next is what are the disadvantages is it is restricted for only ferromagnetic when we say magnetic obviously it is uh, obviously it is restricted only for particles which are magnetic it cannot be even used for the particles like austenitic stainless steel because stainless steel is again a mag non magnetic material it is a messy surface why we why we say this is a messy is when you pour the magnetic particle it will show you this uh, what we say the magnetic effect that will be purely a messy thing okay the most methods needs to supply of current obviously when you when you go for magnetization the only method which you go for magnetization is passing of current okay uh, here i forgot to explain you what is uh, what are the processes by which we go generally go for demagnetization is demagnetization can be done by using uh, uh, by, by sending the current in the reverse direction or by heating the surfaces these are the two techniques which you generally use for demagnetization for magnetization we generally uh, allow the current to pass through the material may to make the material magnetized whereas in demagnetization we will send the current in reverse direction and we can able to make the material demagnetized by by heating the surfaces of the material okay it is sometimes unclear when the magnetic field is sufficiently strong to give good indications if the man that we have, we have we should be very much clear with this if the magnetic if the magnetic field generated around the material is not clear is not uh, proper or not sufficiently strong it cannot able to attract the magnetic particles which by which we cannot able to see the indications which by which we cannot able to identify the gaps or cracks which are present on the surfaces this method cannot be used if the thick paint coatings are present obviously if, if, if on the surface there is a large thick coating on the surface of the material because of the thick coating it will not be able to attract the magnetic material the ferromagnetic material which has been magnetized you not able to attract the material because this paint behaves as a barrier between those things next superior or non relevant indications are 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 a pr uh, probable and thus interpretation is a 
needed by using a skilled person in this to identify this uh, what we say irrelevant identification of the false indication or not relevant indications a skilled person is required because he can able to understand is the uh, this indication is a false one because if you see here i have told in both non relevant there is a flux leakage in relevant also there is a flux leakage so these flux leakages how uh, how to interpret that has to be done by using a that can be done properly by a skilled person only some of the pints and particle suspension fluids can give a fume or fire problem when uh, especially in wet wet particle inspection that liquid like kerosene petrol you are using along with that you are sending some amount of current because of the flow of current and because of that uh, petrol or kerosene they may they may lead to some illumination that is fumes may be generated or fire problems may be confined so that must be very much careful when you are using uh, petroleum uh, petrol the amount of current should be uh, proper so these are the few disadvantages which you generally observe in magnetic particle inspection technique so uh, if you see this uh, so these are the few natures these are the few images where we are applying dry particle inspection technique so uh, nature of defect is lack of fusion if you are welding two materials this is a uh, lap joint okay so t t joint or lap joint where you are going to join two materials if you can observe this this i will show in color images so there will be a small gaps created which is because of the lack of fusion in the shield metal because of arc welding when you are doing arc welding there will be shield generated because of which there is a lack of fusion the two materials are not joined properly because of which a small crack is generated the toe crack is shielded met, uh, metal arc welding next is the crack initiation from the hole service induced failure so when you are creating a hole because of the hole creation the small crack may be generated you generally observe in wood materials when you are uh, passing a nail through a wood when the wood passes through the small crack may be generated or across the hole so that may be happen in the surface indication of cracks running between the attainment uh, attachment holes in the hinge when you are attaching a hinge if you hinge is nothing but uh, this is nothing but your uh, doors when two doors are joined by using a hinge you can see that so if if it a lot amount of pressure is applied between the two holes the crack may be generated see that these are the color images of this visible by dry powder method so these are the crack indications next here if you see this are the small variation which has been created visible by dry powder so these are the rod and toe um, crack and partially grounded uh, weld next uh, visible applications of magnetic particle inspection by using fluorescent fluorescent is this see this so they have been illuminated by using some kind of uh, uv rays so these are the rays which are being passed so these are the cracks which have been generated you can see this cracks fluorescently they can observe without that we cannot able to see them so these are the cracks because why this can able to observe is the particle the magnetic particle should go and sit inside this crack when you pass the current through this you can able to see this cracks easily okay so these are the few examples so with this we can able to end our uh, first unit in which we have studied about liquid penetration technique and as well as magnetic particle inspection technique okay please go through this all these things uh, i will share the your notes for this if you have any doubt please uh, write in a comment box or you can directly